It has been a minute since we've recorded an episode, and you asked me just a second ago a really great question. If we're going to put out a 20-minute episode, why should anyone care or listen, or why are we doing this? And What's the point that's that's important enough for somebody to listen or that we would think that would be bring enough value to the table that would warrant somebody invest in time, right? Right. And so today our topic is about truth-telling um, in the sense of how do you actually do that in the business world and not from a standpoint of you're lying, but from a deep, meaningful level of what are we actually doing to tell the truth about who we are and what we're created to do yeah. and help other people. And a lot of people don't know that. Like, they don't know the truth about themselves. And I think that's one of the things that we've discovered. It, that's why it's uh, it's hit us so hard and it's something that we would want to share is that it's it's hit us so hard in talking to a lot of our clients because we're doing more and more uh, workshops with clients who come in and they're paying us to help them find their brand and find their identity and then be able to communicate it. And it's just amazing to sit and to listen and hear some of these people talking and they don't even know what the truth. I mean, they, they're not even close to the truth. So it just, it kind of led me to believe that a lot, we're operating under a lot of false assumptions in a lot of different scenarios in business and it's costly. You know, it's, it really hurts companies on a, on a bottom line level, mm-hmm. not knowing truth. Right. And I think for me, if I get down really deep into the the lies that i'm believing they all start with this core core law that i'm alone alone and powerless uh, is what we we've heard a lot in the uh, living fearless book but alone and powerless that right there will make you make terrible decisions why do you feel alone well (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) actually (laughs) Uh, if we wanna, right if, <laughs> I know it's funny because I'm in a family business. I'm not alone. <laughs> but deeper than that, if I look back at the last 30, oh, I'm 31, 31 years of watching you, my dad, own a small business, it's not that you ever came out and said, I'm alone or anything. It's just that you've had your actions have shown that you've acted in a way of a lot of times of you're alone feeling alone feeling yeah. alone like at the end of the day at the end of the month this comes down to me being able to <laughs> make payroll i almost or... feel like it's child abuse i've done to you. like you had to watch me suffer for so long and when it came to that like just that that feeling of i don't know i don't want to say desperation but you know there was this level of pressure every month that we had to make a certain amount of money to make payroll mm-hmm. to keep operating and when now, you live granted, with that, you handled that better than anyone that I could imagine. You. But it's just, you know, here recently thinking, maybe there is a different way. If, so as if, we're transitioning. As we're transitioning, if we both believe there is a different way and it doesn't come down to it's all on us, it allows us to make just different decisions. When you're, when you're making decisions from peace and from truth, yeah, they're way, they're way better, and they lead to much better places. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there was a there was a pressure packed lie that I feel like I lived under. You've had to you had to live with it and see it and have a, a front row seat, which is for me that's sad as a parent. But I know you've learned a lot, mm-hmm. and I know that you're much more ready now to be able to take things into the future and be a great leader and hopefully i mean my my hope and prayer for you is that you would be able to do that with a lot more peace Mm -hmm. and i know this podcast we call it uh, peace over pressure but you know internally just having a peace about what you're doing if you if you're operating from truth then you will have more peace and things will just you'll have a clarity that just makes things much easier to operate from that's one of the things that I've noticed over the years that led me to the to making the worst decisions the uh in you know in business was not operating from truth just and I didn't know any better you know operating from a from uh not not even lies and it's not that people tell you lies because that not, that's not really what we're talking about it's just mm-hmm. operating from false assumptions or things that you 
think are a certain way, you know, the truth was something completely different. So it's like the, the sooner you can get to the truth of any situation, the sooner you can get to an actual solution. And that's just something that I feel like we get blocked from. So how do you get lies. to the truth? How do I get to the truth? Uh, well, for me, and and I think I've heard you say this too, but like asking the hard questions uh, of myself and of other people, because if I see somebody that I know, you know, in a grocery store, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm good. How you doing? And then you go on. There's there's that level, you know, that surface level. But I've noticed, like, and and with employees, it's easy to do that too. People that you work with, it's easy to just you know gloss uh, over gloss over just you know shuffle right through a day and not really get into any meaningful conversation so learning to stop and actually talk to people about you know what what's your um what are you dealing with right now or what you know is there something that you might need help with or thinking through or you know somebody to just pray with you about something so just trying to get to a deeper level of understanding of where people are coming from on any given day in any situation uh, just trying to get to the truth, you know, and I think it, sometimes it's just stopping to ask that hard questions um, and not settle for the, oh, I'm good or all oh, this is all good or everything's fine and, and dandy. You know, it's like, no, we need to really look at this. Is it? I have a good example of this. Um, for a long time, I was really afraid to ask for anyone's help on things. And um, my the lie that I was telling myself or believing was that Nobody wants to help. They're already too busy. If you ask them, they're going to be mad. Um, Just all these like assumptions, basically. And what I found in actually talking (laughs) to some of my teammates is they were literally just waiting on me to ask for their help because they they wanted to help. And um, one in particular told me she was like, I thought you just wanted to like control all of that and that you like don't trust anybody to help. And I was like. So we're both operating out of a law and how inefficient really that is. Yeah. Um, But if we would have just had a conversation sooner. Look at what that led to. I mean, you lived with much more work, much more pressure, and they lived with that. She don't. And I told her, I said, I have a hard time asking for help for whatever reason. I have a hard time. And so what that led to was she'll come by my office now and say, Tori, what can I help you with? Because she's like waiting for me to just tell her. And it's up to me to extend that and let her help me and and be a part of whatever it is I'm working on. Is there any other, uh, you know, like specific examples of where you were operating under false pretenses of something? Yes. Um, So there was a situation here recently where an opportunity presented itself that I needed to make a decision or do a bunch of things before the end of the year. And as y'all know, this is in order just to start fresh on January 1st. Right. So there was this January one deadline that presented itself and it sounded really great. um, But what it was going to require, um, and you know how busy this season is and we're in the Thanksgiving Christmas season right now. And um, and you had three kids. And I have three kids. But anyways, really exciting opportunity. But I had to start like thinking about where is okay, I feel pressure. I'm way more aware now when I feel pressure and and willing to ask myself the hard questions of like, where is it coming from? Is it coming from myself? Is it coming from someone else? If it's coming from someone else, I need to talk to them and figure out, are, do they actually mean for that to come yeah to me or not or was that the intention and um in talking to that person they're like yeah no this is it doesn't have to be january one um and then i had a friend who was willing to ask me the hard question of where is that pressure coming from and is it really worth what you'd have to go through to get there and um and she also told me she was like you'll you'll just know you'll just know and so we have to find that inner um like the Voice. pressure points, what, because I, I was going to say, like, how how did you come to that knowledge to where you know to look for pressure? Because I, I've came to that lately too. I mean, like, that's something we've been learning over the past year, and it's the most valuable thing ever. You know, to be able to question those things that when you start feeling stress or pressure or anxiety, um, 
you just stop and ask why. Like, wait mm-hmm. a minute, where's this coming from? Because usually it's deeper mm-hmm. than we we're normally looking. Yeah. And just and I think a lot of people learn to live that way, and they think that's just normal life. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Like, and I can deal with with stress. I can deal with with that. It wasn't a matter of let's avoid stress at all costs. It's not that. It's like a deeper a deeper knowing mm-hmm. of in the grand scheme of life how important is this. And how much peace are you willing to give up to obtain it? Yeah, I think me and you both are at danger in terms of when we set our mind to something, like we're going to accomplish it no matter what. And so when we get something in our mind, or I'm just speaking for me, and I, I, this needs to be done by a certain time and all these things need to happen, then I start you know, working towards that. Mm-hmm. And then that can take on a life of its own and a whole pressure of its own. And then when, like when you were talking about and I know what you were talking about as far as that deadline for January. And then when you realized, oh, wait a minute, we don't have to do that. There's no, there's nothing in the Bible that says we have to do that by January the 1st. It's mm-hmm. like this pressure valve just releases. And, you know, I've, I've felt that before where somebody pointed out a truth to me and, and I realized, man, I've been carrying that and that's weighted me down and put pressure on me and didn't even have to be there. And so it's just like this huge relief and if i could give anybody that's listening to this the gift of just taking some of those things that are on the inside and just un you know uh release the pressure valve and feel that feel that peace that there's a lot of things a lot of expectations that are on you that are self-imposed you know they're not they're not coming from other people the business landscape in general is just packed with with pressure and deadlines and expectations and all of those things. And I guess maybe the reason I'm so passionate about even speaking about peace over pressure is if even one person is like, yeah, I'm just sick of living like this. And I'm wondering if there's like a different way. I just want to tell you that it is possible. And there are other, actually, if you look around, probably everyone around you is dying in that same yeah. in that same pressure. No, everybody you see is dealing with that. I mean, even the most um I don't know, knowledgeable or well-adjusted people that you that you know, give off that persona, they you think they're in control of everything, when you really get to talking to them, a lot of that's a facade and that's mm-hmm. and they don't even mean to do that maybe. They don't start out to deceive people. It's not a lie, it's just false. It's just well, it's like the truth. snowball theory. Like you start with one little law that maybe isn't is just that I really this is all I can actually do in the world. So I'm just going to do this. And then year after year, it just builds and builds. And then all of a sudden you're feel it feels like you're trapped in a law. Yeah. And that leads to just people's life trajectory and the paradigm that they're working on in their in their mind, how they see the world and how they make decisions. And it just, you know, that builds. And unless somebody pokes holes in it in terms of the false, uh, the the falsehoods and the lies, you just you just operate like that. I'm I'm an example of that. I mean, I operated under a lot of false pretenses for a lot of years, just not knowing anymore, just you know, going along with the tide of this is how it's always been done, and this is how I think it it should be. So um, when you when when you have, I tell you, that's one of the most valuable things you can have is people that are close enough to you, that love you enough, that will poke holes in you, that are brave enough mm-hmm. to poke I think you're brave sometimes when you poke at me and say, well, why are you doing that? No, I don't agree with that. Why are you doing that? And I and, it, and it's forced me to be <laughs> better at um, articulating my reasons. <laughs> <laughs> better at lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but what better you... at articulating my reasons and thinking through and know like, okay, I really do believe this. This is my deep truth. Tori might not agree with me on that, and we're just going to have to agree to disagree. But you know, at least I have a thought out position that's been well questioned. Yeah, and you you touched on this, and we've said it probably in every episode. But it, don't go poking holes in people unless you first help them understand that they are loved yeah. because <laughs> yeah. that's just, that's a recipe for disaster. I wouldn't receive that from you if right. I didn't think you love me. And same, because if I didn't believe that there was um, a bigger picture at play and that God loved me, he had a plan for me, I would put all of my eggs in 
in a certain basket or I would be devastated if you poked a hole in the wrong area. Um, but because I know that I'm deeply loved, it there allows. Was, there probably there was times like that, wasn't there? Yeah. In the past, yeah. like where we, we didn't have that type of relationship and it probably did hurt a lot more or something. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, truth, the, the most valuable thing about truth is that it leads to clarity. And when you have clarity, uh, you can have confidence in what you're doing. And when you have confidence and clarity, you can get vision. And people with vision can change the world. I would wrap this up by saying to surround yourself with people who are willing to ask you hard questions and be truthful with you. Because really, I think any catalyst in my life um, of breakthrough has always been tied back to somebody asking a question and just making you think a little bit differently so when you get and when you get to that truth like i said you know clarity confidence vision but when you get there you just live with a spirit of thriving of positivity you know of hey i'm helping the world or you know i'm i'm going to be able to show love to somebody and it's going to make a difference and, and it don't matter how big you might impact two or three people a day or you may be impacting thousands but when you live in that spirit, there's just, man, there's a there's a piece to that. And um, I think it's worth fighting for and it's worth seeking truth. I guess that was probably the point of this whole thing is seek the truth. And the truth is not easy to find most of the time. You have to dig deep and you have to ask people those hard questions and you have to be willing to receive them. Cool. Amen. Amen. <laughs>